So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on today's webinar. My name is Lee Alder and I'm the HR business partner here at UMI. I'm joined by my colleague, Bethany Wright, who is our relationship and engagement manager. Hi, Bethany. Hi, everyone. So here at UMI, we help businesses by taking the hard work out of finding the very best expertise, information and finance. Today, we are here to explore and discuss how to lead in times of unexpected change, which is very fitting in our current circumstances. And on that note, I would like to introduce our guest. So today we've got Laura and Sarah from Duo Global Consultant. Duo are experts working with businesses of all shapes and sizes, helping them navigate through unexpected change and maximize productivity in their workplaces, whether that be in the office or working remotely. So starting with Laura. Laura is the founder and managing director of Duo and has an extensive background in organizational culture, recruitment, people and HR strategy for growth focused businesses. Laura established Duo back in 2014 and prior to that, Laura set up and managed several other high growth international businesses, providing her with key experience in navigating the ever changing complexities of diverse organizational landscapes. So hi Laura, thanks for joining us today. Is there anything else you'd like to add about yourself? <laughs> no, I think you did a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So if I move on to Sarah, so Sarah is the commercial director of Duo. She drives the commercial strategy both internally and externally with clients. Sarah's wealth of business knowledge, coupled with her experience as a qualified behavioral change coach, perfectly places her to work with growth focused businesses on leading and navigating strategic change. Hi, Sarah. Nice to Hi. see you. Thanks for having us. Hi. No problem. Is there anything else you would like to add before we get started? No, I think you've done a good job too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Great. Thanks, ladies. So just to start off, can you tell us more about why it's important for businesses to deal proactively with the change and how can leaders step up to the challenge? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think you know, we're in unprecedented times. The, this is a, an environment where we, we and this is our bread and butter, we work with businesses, um, helping them navigate change. And we work with a lot of high growth businesses or businesses that are experiencing um, the need to diversify, or sometimes it's an acquisition where change is a really big piece that they're looking to navigate. And that's often driven by chosen change where we're at at the moment is really, um, this is unexpected change, it's forced change, it's, it's something that nobody had planned for, nobody had anticipated. And along with that, it means, I mean, there's a lots of pressures on business leaders and businesses um, to deal with a number, a number of things, as well as them dealing with their own personal circumstances. Um, so this is, this is a, it's different territory. Um, and the interesting thing is that it, it impacts every single person. So nobody's immune to this change. Um, nobody um, can, you know, every single person you speak to, um, and you know, that's worldwide as well as UK wide and every single household, they're dealing with, they're dealing with this change. So this is, um, it's, it's definitely uncharted territory for most of the generations, you know, that are, that are alive now that, um have have never really had to experience this kind of thing before um and so even for even for laura and i this is this is really putting us to the test as a business but also from a point of view of helping our clients navigate that the the impact this is having on their business um and and we've previously dealt with businesses that have gone through huge significant change but this is this is a, it's a it's of a different it's of a different scale Laura, I don't know if you've yeah, got anything definitely. else you want to add to that. I, th I think, you know, yeah, I, think it's, I think it's just that it's, it's kind of what you said. It's like, it's that forced change. It's such a big difference between businesses being forced into a change that they didn't foresee and therefore they weren't able to plan for than um, a lot of the change that businesses go through, you know, when it comes to like acquisitions and mergers um, and even, even to an extent, negative things that are negative change, like redundancies and things, often there's still expected change to an extent that business leaders get a heads up. 
So they almost get that time to do some of that pre-planning stuff behind the scenes before they have to communicate it to their team. And I think that's the big difference that we're seeing is that that really businesses and, and their leaders got as much notice as the people within the business did. So is that there's really striking that balance between both, between having to deal with the strategy behind it and communicating at the same time. Yeah, yeah totally. It's been a very quick turnaround, hasn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what would you say are the common challenges businesses are faced with in the situation we find ourselves in at the moment? Yeah. And um, so, so we've obviously been working with our current clients and we've actually been working with a number of um, additional people who've reached out and offered help. And there, I would say that probably, I mean, there's lots, but we did, uh, you know, we're thinking about sort of the top three. Um, first of all, I think it's leading businesses it's leading a business who are dealing with change from a, at a business level first. So what I mean by that is, is, is it's about actually looking at the strategy of the business. It's about looking at um, this stuff cuts across every element of a business. So even, even those businesses that are still able to work and function, um, it's, they're doing it in a totally different way to what potentially they were before. Um, so we've still got a number of clients who are still who are still you know who, who are working remotely, and we've actually got some clients who are working out and still have have key key worker roles. So um, they have to really look at as a leader. You have to look at the strategy of the business, and really, a lot of our clients are saying is it's how do you make sure ensure that you still have a business left once we come out of this period? How do we safeguard and make? really tough decisions um, to make sure that there's a business still in a position where they can trade and operate. So really the business, you know, that's a real common challenge is like the business strategy and how to make key decisions that safeguard the business and the people then within that business. Um, I think secondly, it's then dealing with the change at a people sort of team level. So how do we make sure that you know, it's a real challenge to make those strategic business decisions and then manage the fallout of that and the impact that has on the people at a team level. Um, so, you know, supporting your team, making sure that you're communicating consistent key messages because in this time, it's really difficult. You know, the pace is so quick um, that actually you're making a decision and then you're having to communicate it and how do you distill information to your team um, in a way that you know people it receive it in the way it's intended so I think there's absolutely there's an appreciation that the team might need your team might need extra support during this and then I think the third challenge and I've just touched on it but really is communication so a lot of people are working differently in a different working environment. More often than enough, they're, they're working remotely, not in a team environment. And that communication piece is absolutely critical from top downwards to distill information in a way that people can receive it, make sense of it, and don't storytell around it. I mean, we have a, a really lovely quote that we use a lot, and um, it's around, if you don't give people a narrative, they will create their own. So as leaders, we have to make sure that people are receiving the information in a timely manner, you know, um, and this, is, this isn't this is just with your, your team, it's with your clients, it's with suppliers, it's the whole, it's everybody that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis in a business, that communication suddenly becomes way more difficult if you're doing it remotely and you can't have that face-to-face -face interaction. And, you know, there's lots of ways and means of people being able to do that, but it is a step change for people. So I would say they're probably the three biggest challenges, um, you know, alongside the, the, the money challenges that probably links into the, the, the strategy stuff that, you know, making decisions around furloughing, the, there's, there's challenges around access and funding and support just so that you can cash flow the business. Like, you know, the, those things cut across every element um so yeah, big decisions and difficult decisions difficult conversations having to be had right now um and that is tough you know yeah 
So you talk there about having difficult conversations with team members. How would you suggest that leaders approach members of staff to have these conversations while we're working from home and we might not have the privacy that we might have had in an office, say? I think for the, you know, for difficult conversations, it's about, it's sort of that piece that Sarah talked about, that narrative piece that often whenever we're, we're talking about difficult conversations, people do the whole storytelling stuff really well beforehand. And often um, the challenge with remote working versus face to face, you know, we talk about all the time when we're talking about difficult conversations, only talk about the facts. So what did you see here or witness? Because and you ladies will know this better than anyone when, when you're in HR and you're having some of those sorts of conversations or, or coaching leaders around them. That's more difficult when you're working remotely because the difficult conversations, sometimes you're having to have, you physically have not seen the situation, heard it, witnessed it. Um, and you can't, and you're sometimes with things like furlough or potentially some businesses that are maybe having to have some conversations with people around um even redundancy or just things that they really didn't want to communicate. There can be a lot of storytelling around how somebody is going to take something, but you can't ever, you can't ever interpret that. And you have to just go into that conversation on an even keel with, I know it's difficult, but with as little emotion attached to it as you possibly can and just have, have as straight a conversation as you can have um, and stick with the facts wherever possible. The one sort of caveat to that that we're talking to our clients about is, remaining human in it and showing some some vulnerability from your standpoint so where a lot of people sort of preempt things and are overly empathetic and they say things like I know that you might be feeling or I, I'm anticipating that you might feel like this don't do those things because you can't ever anticipate how someone's feeling but you can show the vulnerability from your side so you know we had some clients recently where they were doing some company-wide communications and they were worried about how some of that might be perceived by their team and you know we said well share some of your personal implications you know as business owners and leaders it's it's soul destroying for us to see our businesses changing and it's okay to share some of that information you know if you're having a difficult conversation it it humanizes that you know i'm going through this with my family or you know we're finding it really difficult and we're working really hard to do this that that human connection piece is really important but then once you've established that, it's just sticking with the facts and not, not storytelling around what they may or may not be feeling is a big piece, I think. And I think the, the golden rule that we're, we're talking about with our clients is have communi communicate, don't assume, don't let people make assumptions. It, it, over communication is better than under because people are sitting there, they're, you know. So we, we, we had a client, he actually ended up doing a video. We, we suggested he did a short video piece to camera because he's got a big team and they're across the country and so that he could actually he talked to us in a senior management meeting via zoom and and he shared some of what he'd seen with his how his staff had stepped up and more like you need to share that with the wider team and you need to share the work that you're putting in the effort behind as a senior management team to safeguard the the business and communicate that really clearly because often what happens is you just you say you do it, you do all the good work behind the scenes, but you, you don't share it. So then people don't, they don't, assume, you know, often they don't assume you're doing it or they don't know what you're doing. So they make up their own narrative. So it's really important at times like this is to communicate, you know, over communicate if need be and actually touch, do the communication in a number of different ways. So video is great for connection and being able to really show some vulnerability and humanize the, the message. But even, you know, some people like to receive all the details. Some people just like the headlines. Some people like to receive things video face to face. Some people like to receive stuff via email or phone call. The golden rule really is just to ask if you're doing something one on one, ask them, how would you prefer me to, 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 to get in touch? And people will tell you, you know, so it's rather than doing it by your preferred method, ask the person, would you like me to give you a call or let's do this via video? Or if it's a group thing, you know, difficult conversations or difficult messaging it's 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 that humanization piece i think that laura talked about yeah no oh, totally thank you um so how are businesses managing productivity and well-being of staff whilst remote working i think um you know what we're seeing with our clients 
there's you know there's a few key things that we're doing with them and that we're seeing them look at i mean first of all you know for us as a business the the behavioral piece runs through everything that we do you know sarah and i are both behavioral change coaches and um that behavioral insight now more than ever is so important you know whether you're working with somebody in the office you're working remotely you're trying to preempt how they might deal with change what they're how they're dealing with stress if you can understand how your staff are made up behaviorally and what each person's dominant behavioral patterns are it allows you to better predict how they might be behaving feeling um, how productive they'll be in this environment and what then the tools and strategies you might need to put in place to work with them better so we've definitely been seeing a more of that that we're do we've got a lot of clients that are really looking at how do we gain that insight so we've got a behavioral tool that a lot of people have been using to survey their team to really get that in-depth knowledge so that they can then put in place strategies that work versus sort of broad brush we think this might work strategies um and then really i think a lot of people seem to be focusing on cpd currently you know if you've got if you've got teams there are a lot of businesses um and i know you guys are one of them that are busier than ever if you've got businesses that maybe from a from a customer facing standpoint you're not as busy you will never get this opportunity again to spend some time doing cpd with your staff you know we hear all the time or we haven't got time to do management training as an example you know a lot of our clients are looking at upskilling their managers when you're in a busy business often you just you promote people as they as they get to that point but most of them never get any formal leadership or management training so we're actually seeing a lot of businesses take a slight step back because a lot of their managers or leaders aren't being furloughed, but equally are not as busy because they're, some of their teams furloughed or they're not doing as much client facing work. So they're actually using this time to do some upskilling of that. So we've actually been doing a lot of training, both live and through our online learning portal. So that's something we're seeing from a lot of people and we're hearing from a lot of people. Um, and I think within that training piece, there's, there's a real, the starting to become, I think we're sort of, you know, we're a few weeks in now. I think people are starting to think about resilience of their team through this and well-being and of both your current workers and your furloughed workers, because we, we do a lot of identity shift work and, you know, for, for people that are furloughed, they've to an extent lost their work identity a little bit. Um, and a lot of people are, when we've been doing one-to-ones, they're feeling a little bit lost and they're not quite sure where they fit. So some resilient stuff for the people that are furloughed, you know, the government re released some guidelines last week around training is okay to do for furloughed workers. It's not classed as work. So actually we've seen a lot of clients um, jump on that and say, right, okay, we're going to use this opportunity to really show the team. Because I think that's been a lot of concerns that we've heard is, I'm concerned that our furloughed team members feel like they're not a part of the team anymore. Or we don't care about them. So investing, you know, there's a lot of CPD you can do without investing huge sums of money. So um, we've got a lot of clients doing, doing resilience type work with them, but then also on the flip side of their current workers, it's an interesting piece in Sarah and I were just talking about it because a lot of employers have decided to pay their furloughed workers a hundred percent. And it's become a bit of an interesting one because I think on one standpoint, it's a great thing to show people that you're willing to do that. But then it leaves a question with the people that are left working that actually are now being paid the same amount as people who aren't working, but are potentially busier. And a lot of people are still going into, especially if you've got businesses where you're like manufacturing or something like that, they're actually still going into work. And there's then become that question of, how fair is this to pay people the same? So again, they're getting around, I think that they're, they're looking at how can we provide the people who are working with additional support around their resilience that might be slightly different challenge to those that are furloughed, but really just looking at how people are dealing with this, what, what their stress levels are going to be like. I know we were just briefly talking before the call about, I think businesses need to not underestimate what it's going to be like once you return to work and that people are not just going to come back to work and it's going to be fine. You know, some people are going to bring some baggage from this. Some people are going to need some support with that transition. So that well-being piece, it's, it's a real one that I think leaders are having to think about. And one that maybe previously, and even now to an extent, some leaders are probably thinking, 
well, we'll deal with it if we get problems come up. Challenge with the well-being pieces and productivity, really. You often don't know until it's too late. You know, very few people are going to come to you and say, hey, I'm struggling with my well-being or I feel like I'm not being productive. The likelihood of that happening is really unlikely. So putting in place some really proactive stuff to maximize productivity of the people that you've got working and improve the resilience of those that aren't, I think is, is really important currently. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, thank you. So we've had a question through, um, one from the audience. Can you explain a bit more, please, about what you mean by behavioural change? I think so with behavioral change um we first of all you've got your employees behaviors essentially that's what we're looking at and people everybody deals with change differently so understanding your and we can predict this a little bit depending on the type of sector you're in the type of business how long somebody's worked for you but in order to influence change and engage people with that change and support them through that, you need to understand how, how they deal with change. So that's really the big piece that, you know, we, we do a lot, of, like Sarah said at the beginning, we do a lot of change management work. And the biggest challenge that we see with a lot of businesses and with a lot of change management consultancies is they change structural and physical aspects of the business and just expect that people will get on board. The challenge is that in order for change to be sustained, people need to change their thinking, their beliefs and their behavior around that change. So that's, that's really what we mean is before you embark on any change, and obviously with this, you, it isn't chosen. So we didn't have a chance to do it before. Can you figure out how, how each individual within your team deals with change and then tailor your approach according to that? And there's ways if you've got big businesses, you know, our, our tool helps people look at that on a, on a mass scale. You really just need to know what are the percentages, because if you've got more than 50 percent of people that really struggle with change, you're going to have to do more work on that than maybe a business, you know, as a general rule, tech companies, as an example, would have more people that are open to change because of a lot of the work that they do versus a lot of professional services have more of a balance of people who don't engage with change as well just because then the nature of their work tends to be more static or the change is slower so that's really what we mean by that and so yeah. you've got anything to add to that yeah it's probably worth mentioning so there might be some people on 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 listening that that think are more familiar with the term personality profiling yeah. so where people um in the past have potentially done a personality profile and they've been given information about their personality um laura and i focus on behaviors personality tends to be relatively static. So if you, if you get profiled when you're younger, usually your personality doesn't really change significantly. And we often tell the story, Laura was, her father was a, a dad is a, a Myers-Briggs practitioner, which is a personality profiling tool. And he profiled her when she was really small. She was almost a guinea pig when she was about eight and then profiled her in her twenties and she hadn't changed. The beauty about behavior is our behavior is impacted by um, the context that we're in, so whether we're at work, whether we're at home, um, whether we're with our friends, and you can change your behaviours. So in, what we do is we help people focus on potentially where their real strengths are at work from a behavioural standpoint, but how they can then use that, to, that insight to understand how they better communicate with other people and how they can build relationships more easily. And so the behavioural profiling tool allows you to understand yourself first and then other people. But also when Laura and I do work as a coach, we help people understand what that means for them. And potentially if they do need to flex it, how do they flex it in order to get better outcomes? So behavioral change is really around understanding how people behave. And then as a leader in an organization, it's about understanding how that might be different to you. And then what would you need to do to be able to influence that change better? Um, and we're all, you know, we, we're all different. That's the wonderful thing about us all. So, um, you know, and our behaviors are different. So the, the, that change piece for, for some people, you'll, everybody, I mean, everybody we speak to, people have had tough days um, and they've had times when they think this is really fun and they're adapting and it's great. And then you, you speak to the next person. Devastated 
rent, they can't afford to pay bills, they you know, the extremities. And then you talk to key workers and, you know, they're at the front line and they're deep this this change, you know, on at the front front end. So, but how people deal with that, I mean, there's nobody is gonna get it right the whole time that this is going on. And and in business, you you're making decisions based on good intention, but our behaviors drive a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had another question come through from the audience. Um, do you have any specific suggestions for proactively supporting team members with their productivity? Yeah. I mean, the, the challenge you've got, I mean, proactivity is actually a behavioral type. So some people naturally will dive in, get started and move things forward really quickly. Um, Laura and I both have that behavioral pattern as it were so you know as soon as we got the news for this we were like right what do we need to do to be able to service our our clients in in a virtual setting and what do we need to be able to put in place to be able to deliver training and so within a few days we had that moved forward but that's because that we're both driven in that way and um so Unfortunately, as a leader, you do need to strike a balance with being proactive on looking at ways to pivot potentially the business so that you can deliver things in a different way so that the business can still potentially generate an income or maintain relationships with clients. But you also then need to be proactive with um, communication with the team and how you manage the, the people within the business. So from a tip perspective, you know, one of the things that we're saying is, 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 you know, you have to, as a leader, if you're a leader in a business and you're listening, you need to, you need to lead with purpose. You need to think about what is it that you need to do. And if, I mean, prioritization's never been more important, you know, but you have to think of things in um, the immediacy that, you know, what, what do we need to do now? And and prioritize that stuff and strike a balance really. But one of the things that we're saying is, is don't just sit and pause, don't press pause and think, well, we'll ride this out and wait and see what happens. You have to, this is the time when innovation, it, there's huge opportunities for innovation and um, looking at things differently. And, you know, I'm uh, forever the optimist, but I know that there'll be some great things come out of this from a point of view of how people have learned to do things more efficiently, effectively, cost effectively that maybe generated new ways of delivering a service or generated a new product. Um, now I know that's not easy for every single type of business in different sectors. It's more difficult to pivot than it is for others. So I wouldn't want people to think that I'm saying that's an easy option, but it's absolutely something that, you know, you need to be proactive in driving innovation during times like this. And we've already seen in the news and, um, you know, people sharing great stories about great things that have come out of this already and we're only a few weeks in. So it's amazing what people can do when they come together or like-minded people come together and, and they, they put their foot on the accelerator. It's, it's actually sometimes you're torn between sitting back and just waiting or do we, do we start something new and take a risk? And, you know, there's, we're saying, you know, for, for our business, it's about looking at things strategically but to, to pivot, not pause, you know, to, to move forward, to, to get things started um, and avoid sitting back and reflecting too long. Um, and I think for the, from the productivity standpoint, you know, it's just about, it's, it's taking a step and thinking about, and I know you guys are going to direct some resources and we actually wrote a resource on our website that's a free download that people can, people can download, which actually walks them through that, product, that productivity piece. But I think being proactive around looking at productivity with your team, it's thinking about how do they work best in the office? You know, just because you're not working with people face to face, you can still think through that. You know, do they work better in a team? Do they work better on their own? Do they tend to like a process? Do they tend to like more options and flexibility? Are they better when they're fastballed? Do they not enjoy a fastball and you feel like that knocks them out? Think about, it's taking a minute and thinking about how your team work best in the office and just applying that in a remote environment. But that guide actually kind of walks people through some of that stuff so um, people can look through that. But it is just about thinking about how do they work most productively and how can you then tailor? Because what tends to happen in these situations is as leaders and managers, we're juggling so much at the moment, there can be sometimes a, 
that almost broad brush stroke apply when you're working with people remotely you think right okay I'm just going to deal with everybody the same because I'm not quite sure how to navigate this where in the office you naturally flex because you see people's body language you see how they respond to something this can't be broad brush stuff and if all else fails ask them it's kind of what Sarah said before when we were talking about you know how people like to be communicated with normally people will tell you you know if you say how how can I work best with you at the moment? What do you need from me? Do you, you know, we've got some clients that are sending out surveys. We just ran one of our culture clubs that we run internally with clients um, last week. And we're going to do a survey to the team to ask what they want from the business at this time. What do they want from their managers and their leaders? You can ask and people will tell you versus trying to do the mind reading thing and potentially putting in place a load of stuff that maybe people don't need or isn't actually helping drive productivity. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so we've had one question from the audience. Um, so you mentioned behavioural mapping tool. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this and how, how do people use it? Yeah, so we've actually got an online tool and it's basically a survey. So um, Sarah mentioned personality profiling before. If anybody's ever done a personality profile, it's very similar, um, but it's just, it maps behaviour, it's not personality. So essentially, um, a client would purchase however many they wanted for their team. So they would just get in touch with us and then they send a link to the team and the team just complete it. And then off the back of that, we provide them with maps of their team to show them essentially where their dominant behavioral patterns are because the challenge currently is you can't, you know, there's 38 cognitive behavioral patterns that we work with most often. It's not realistic for managers to understand all 38 in the current circumstance. All you need to know is where are your team's top three or four that are going to cause the biggest challenges, potentially from a productivity standpoint, from an engagement standpoint, from a communication standpoint. So we essentially then provide the company with that overview and they use that to inform their communication. We've actually had quite a few clients where they've done these in the past and they've actually re-ran them. We've probably had, um, we've probably done um, about 300 different team members over the just over the last week of different clients where they wow. just want to refresh that because behaviors change over time so really having some insight into that can be really really useful yeah oh, that's great and thank you just touching on what uh, sarah mentioned before about striking the balance and um, from a well-being perspective how would you suggest that both employees and leaders manage the well-being in terms of switching off and being able to maintain that work-life balance especially now considering our homes are in the workplace it's a it's a really interesting question we were chatting about this uh just well over the last few days laura and i've been chatting about this a lot because you're basically you know you've got to remember you're not working from home your people who are working from home are currently managing a pandemic whilst at home and working and often in a lot of cases people are managing families and all of what all the pressures of what that means to be in under one roof um so people's roles we, we usually talk to people about their roles we'll say that you know you have your identity as you then you have your roles and we talk about how to manage them and be the best you can during the time that you're dedicating to that role however all of that kind of goes out the window currently for a lot of people because your roles are blurred. So you're in, you know, you might be working at home and you haven't suddenly become a teacher to your children and you're helping potentially a husband who's a partner or someone who works with you in their role. And you're, you know, you're looking to juggle everything all at the same time. So, you know, this without, this doesn't, I'm not meaning to sound patronizing, be gentle on yourself be kind to yourself because this is tricky. So it's not, you know, it, and there's lots of people dealing with things in different ways. We find that actually people are responding way better if there is structure where you possibly can put it. So, you know, still having some kind of routine um, because the really the thing that's changed for a lot of us is that we're working from a different environment, but for some people, the work's similar or they're doing a similar role, but they're just doing it in a different environment. So how do you make that environment? You know, and there's lots of things flying around the internet about, you know, get dressed and put your lipstick on and put a tie on or whatever. But 
really it's more than that it's about structure it's about where plan out what you want to do have some structure in your day if having a walk before you start what your thing is and you you know we're all allowed to go out once a day then make sure like me personally I like to to do some physical exercise before I come to work so but there's also some things like putting some structure in place for people in the team, like team meetings. Like we start our day off every day with a team meeting with the team and, and we do that via video so we can see each other. Um, and we also use project management, a project management tool and we're using that way more than we'd normally use it. So we have, you know, a board where everybody takes off what they're doing and what projects they're accountable for and helping drive that accountability and responsibility. So people have a purpose, you know, so they, they feel like they've got a purpose to work, work towards. It's really important that people don't get left not feeling what they're, what it is they're supposed to be doing. So that shared project management tool can be super useful. Um, and, you know, it's, it's then about sort of making sure that you do switch off and dial out and take time for yourselves and get that fresh air where you can. Um, and, you know, not to sit working ridiculous hours because you think that you should be or, you know, your job's in jeopardy because you don't know the uncertainty around the future and you think I, I need to be seen to be working all hours. You will hit burnout. Mm -hmm. You will hit burnout and that's, that's not a great place to be. So you need to spot the triggers in yourself when you're feeling like you need time out. Listen to your body. It will tell you when you need to, to pause and take time out. Um, you know, it's, it's really interesting. People have different mechanisms, but it's about, this is often, this is a time for putting in more structure than you would normally have um, to make you feel like you, you know, you have things to achieve each, t each day. Um, and even for people who, you know, if you've got staff who have been furloughed, I was talking to someone just last night around how the, it, it, he's feeling difficult because he's not, he's not got a purpose every day because he's not at work. And so I said, get, do some CPD, learn some new stuff, but give yourself a purpose, whether that's, you know, Laura and I have just bought the team. Um, it's a masterclass. It's a, it's a, it's a central, it's sorry, Laura called masterclass it's called masterclass and you basically it it means you can log in and learn new skills from all kinds of famous people and um it was our way of saying to people go and learn something new and whether that's interior design or cooking or how to apply makeup or there's all kinds of stuff on there um but you know that was so we can say to people even if it's a side project do put some side projects in place so you've got something to focus your mind on and um, that isn't work but the physical activity and eating well and managing sort of to do, to feed your body, you know, you, we were chatting yesterday about that, the difference between that it's really important to feed your mind and your body. So, you know, physical activity is one thing, but actually you also need to think about your immune system in current, the current situation and how are you giving yourself the best chance to be able to keep your moods your mood levels up and your energy levels up um, because this is a time where often people are having mood swings and their energy levels are up and down and they're feeling like they're the only person that's having that. They're not. We are all having that, but it's about giving yourself the best chance to be sort of fit and have the energy that you need to be able to, to tackle some of the challenges ahead. Um, so that well-being piece is really, really critical. And I think as employers, we need to be mindful of that. Um, so, you know, we've been, we've done, we've had some clients ask us for some guides around that and some advice. And we've ran some webinars for clients where we've talked about this stuff. Um, they've offered one-to-ones um, to, to staff so that people can, you know, there's an option if you need, feel like you need to talk to someone, you can. Um, and I know that's not necessarily going to be relevant or feasible for every business owner, but there are, there are, there's quite a lot of stuff um, that's free of charge that you can also circulate um, or things that you can, just being seen to care is enough. People feeling valued, people feeling like that, you know, people have got their back and they're part of something. I mean, we've seen some fantastic examples of people coming together and helping each other and, you know, that camaraderie amongst teams. It's just, I mean, it's, it's amazing to see. So, 
for all of the challenges Laura and I have seen within our clients and people that we're working with, we've seen some amazing stuff where people have just stepped up and delivered and worked together. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We've seen it in the community. We've seen, you know, we've seen some amazing examples of that with community and key workers and people helping and supporting and raising money. And so, um, Often the focus of your mind on positive things and feeling like you're doing something while staying within the rules, obviously, um, can actually be really great. So, you know, volunteering to do calls or to, you know, pick up shopping if you can or whatever, it make it feeds the soul. You know, it makes you feel like you have a purpose during a time of, of challenge. So. No, I totally agree with that. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so how do you manage your own resilience as a leader in the current climate? I think, I mean, I think all of the things that, that Sarah just talked about really, but you know, we, we're constantly learning new stuff. You know, we're doing one-to-ones with people almost every day around this stuff. And I think, I think it's important. It's interesting. We were just talking about that yesterday around like keeping our own resilience levels high. Cause the more you're exposed to it, you know, we've been doing one-to-ones with, um, team members of clients that have, have had the virus have, have interacted with someone who's had it and the impact on them but then that impacts on us because you know we're sharing some of that information so we do all of I guess all of the above of what Sarah was talking about but I think again as a leader I think there's a there's a few things you know the, the communication piece um with our team it's that consistent level of communication you know Sarah talked about we do team meetings every morning and you know, some of them, have we talked about the, the, some of the stuff the day before? Probably, but you know, some mornings people just need, need an extra check-in. I mean, yesterday, most of our team meeting yesterday morning was sort of spent sharing some stuff about, I think the four day weekend hadn't been great for a lot of people because a lot of people are busying themselves with work. So we actually spent some time just as a team talking about how we raise the energy levels after that. So it's that consistency, you know, what we've been seeing is it's especially in big businesses. Um, it's about getting your managers and leaders on the same page because we're seeing so in some businesses, some inconsistency around, you know, some managers are checking in with their team and doing a call every morning. Some are doing it once a week. Some haven't done it and are still just sticking to emails. The real challenge with that is that all of your employees are having a different experience and it can breed some discontentment because people feel like some people are getting things and they're not. So I think that consistency piece from a leader and a resilience perspective is really important because as we said before, it's the narrative piece, you know, why are those people getting it and I'm not, and it doesn't need to be long. It can be 10 minutes, you know, 10 minutes at the start of the day, um, just to get everybody on the right page, I think is really important. But also being again going back to the thing we talked about at the beginning you know it's okay as a leader to show a little bit of vulnerability to your team you know explain that you're struggling with some stuff and that the, the door is open to have a conversation if they need it because often as leaders we put these game faces on we've got it and we've got to show everybody we're in control and there is absolutely an element of that that from a business perspective you do need to breed security and confidence and give the team that but from a personal perspective you can show a little bit of vulnerability in order to allow people to feel like it's safe to open up because i think that's currently a big piece it's making people feel like they can come to you if they need you yeah i mean you know we can give you a little insight into laura and i's life you know around doing zoom workouts in the garden with each other and um, <laughs> you know and um checking in on each other around what we're eating and and um, but actually doing some coaching with each other during this time, we've, we've definitely been doing that because it, you know, it, it's, it, it's important for you to be talking and you don't have to be a qualified coach to help someone. You can just ask them if they're okay, making calls to people. You know, we've got a client um, down in London who their management team's doing a great job. Um, they, they're literally, they're, they're calling up, particularly those people who live on their own, because there's a lot of their team are, um, you know, they live on their own in, in, in the city and making just a personal call from the director to say, how are you doing? Are you okay? And arranging a social on a Friday like they used to do in the office and just having four o'clock drinks over at Zoom or, um, or Teams and that camaraderie piece, um, you know, and doing book clubs where people are reading books and then jumping on a call and chatting about them or there's those it's honestly i can't stress enough how important small acts of kindness can impact 
a person or a team mm -hmm. so you know it's and and you know sometimes people will say to us well what, what can i be doing i'm like ask do something you know if you've got more time on your hands because your job is less because of the situation ways of projects improvements ensure that you know that you you're using this time effectively because that's the sort of stuff that just you know the small things amount to really big impact often and so you know if anything i would say don't you know don't hold back just 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 reach out to people um that some of the behavioral profiling stuff really um there's certain behavioral types that really really need that interaction with people and what that means is is whilst you're working remotely you can feel super isolated it's it's one of the things that motivates people to go to work often is people and their team and feeling like they belong so this remote work and and, and i'm one of those so this remote working is really tough in the sense of um still having that interaction with the team so we do way more video calls than than we do phone calls because our team has got a bigger skew with people who like to feel like they belong and want to be part of the team and the camaraderie piece is really important to be motivated so you know we're we're working on that and we're responding i'm sure laura's sick of doing video calls with me um because it's my preferred method but i like to be able to see i even sometimes when we're working we're just we'll keep video on and we're, we'll work on docu shared documents together but you know uh it's it's about to be honest with you it's about helping yourself nobody can do it for you you have to help yourself. And whether that's you as a business leader or a manager or someone working in a business, you've got to take responsibility for being, for taking ownership of what you can do. And don't think about what you can't do. Don't think about what the what ifs too much because currently nobody, nobody knows what the next few weeks are going to look like. Um, you can plan your scenarios from a business strategy perspective, absolutely. But, you know, I'm getting up every day and thinking, how can I make today great? How can I make this the best day I can make it? And then I'm going to bed and I'm getting up the next morning and I'm starting from fresh. How can I make today great? Because we plan for the business. We've got the scenarios in place. We know what we're doing. However, I don't want to sit and fret on that every day. That's that it's not useful for your well-being or your energy levels. So it's about putting your energy where it counts. Um, you know, there's a lot of people saying, I've got no energy, I just feel lethargic, I feel really tired. The less you do, the less energy often you have. It's, a, you know, the, 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 the more static you are, and the less you use your mind, the more fatigued you often feel. So, you know. The mindset piece is so important, isn't it? It's just, it's getting that right and leading from the front. You know, if you're, as a leader, you know, being not visible because you can't motivate yourself, not communicating, you know, we're sort of asking the question of leaders, like, how have you stepped up in this? Like, are you going to look back at this and be really proud about how you stepped up? How are you being more visible? How are you communicating more? Because this is currently the time to do more. And, you know, we're seeing so many amazing examples of that with current clients, with people who aren't clients, but we're also seeing some people that are just the same as the way or maybe are just sort of in their own head about it and it's like your team need more from you right now and people remember how people deal with situations like this so this actually could be a pivot point for your business and for the engagement of your staff because if you do this well this is the sort of stuff that creates lifetime loyalty with people so it's really thinking about how you're stepping up at the moment yeah yeah great Definitely. So how does Duo Consultant focus and tailor services specifically to the needs of businesses? Do you have any examples? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, some of the, we've sort of talked about some of those pieces, but I think for, for us currently, you know, we're doing a lot of tailored stuff for clients. Um, we were lucky in the fact of, um, or are lucky, I suppose, in the fact of we've got um, a lot of clients in America. So doing work like this virtually is not a new thing for us. Um, but we have created, you know, some tailored resources. Like I say, there's a lot of resources on our site. 
Um, and we're actually doing quite a bit for clients around tailored webinars, so stuff for their team around resilience or thinking about their own behavioral patterns. Um, and again, the behavioral tool, you know, it's, it's not a new tool, but it's absolutely even more important when you're working with people remotely or they're going through unexpected change. So I think a lot of our, of our services have almost, they've pivoted to that, but they've always been there. Um, they're just, there's just a slightly different, different spin to them now, um, because managing productivity, you know, managing resilience, that's, it, it is the core tools are the same, whether you're doing that with someone face to face or whether it's on a remote basis, it's just that the application and the spotting of those can be, can be more tricky. So having a tool that will help you do that is really useful. Um, we also, which was kind of in the work. So this has sort of helped us in a way that we about six months ago decided to launch an online learning platform. So in addition to a lot of the face to face stuff, we actually have some online learning um, that people can do and it actually has allowed us to bring that forward so we launched that um, about a month ago now and there's um, already a module up there around remote working um, and there's about to be one on resilience and um, we're putting a lot of our management tools on there so it's actually I suppose for that that's probably one thing that a bit of space and time has allowed us to bring that forward um, just to give people different options and different ways to work with us and different ways to learn, different price points, um, you know, all of that. Yeah. I think um, just to add to that, pretty much everything we do is tailored because no business is the same. Although there's obviously models and principles and learning and experience that we can bring to the table, no business is the same and the people aren't the same. So you know, we, when we go in and work with businesses, typically over, we usually work with them, you know, over a, a, a long period of time and work in the business. We'll, we'll, we'll develop training specifically to their needs or we'll deliver sort of, um, you, you know, project-based things that are specific to that client's needs. So a lot of the stuff we do is tailored to a particular, you know, particular organization. Um, and even some of the training that we've been asked to do over this period of time has been stuff that we've delivered over the years, but we're doing it tailored to a particular client. So, you know, it's everything. Laura and I always like, to, like, we like to make things contextual so that it lands right. So if we're delivering something to a, a legal team or we're delivering something to construction and we literally do both, you know, we make sure that the content is relevant to that sector and industry so that it it has a better impact and and, and better learning for for the client or the recipient recipients yeah because i suppose there's no one size fits all approach especially when there's so many team members in different industries involved yeah absolutely yeah but the really great thing with the behavioral stuff is it's interesting because a lot of people have been asking us about like diversity and inclusion and all of that sort of thing. And the great thing about behaviors are you have certain behaviors that just fit a certain role. It doesn't matter what industry you work in, you know, what gender of person you're recruiting, whether they're working from home or they're working in the office, there are just certain behaviors that work better than others in certain contexts. And then in other contexts, there will be others. So that's the, the kind of beauty of it, really. Yeah. Great. So where can people get in touch with uh, Duo uh, to find out more information? Um, I mean, I think our website's probably a good, a good place for people to start. You know, I know you guys are going to send, um, send the link through to the resources page. There's a load of free resources yeah. on there that people can access. Um, so yeah, and there's online learning and things that people can start that has a fairly low entry point to start to work with us. But equally, you know, feel free to circulate our emails. You know, we're more than happy to answer any questions. If anyone wants to jump on a phone call, just to benchmark some questions or or almost cross checks and stuff that's going on in their business, that's always something that Sarah and I are more than happy to do. So yeah, feel free to reach out on email or you know on the website on LinkedIn whatever medium you prefer to use. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, thanks. Um, and also, Umi has a comprehensive article on all the support on offer at the businesses during COVID-19 crisis. Um, and that can be found on Umi's website um, at www.weareumi.co.uk. Um, so has anybody got anything to add? 
I just want to say thanks for having us and um, you know, good luck to to people navigating this it's unexpected change and and you know it, it's it, we will the, we will come out of this at the other end and I think you know it's about it's about staying focused and positive where we can um, and you know just we want we want people to 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 reach out if we can help in any way you know that's what we're here for so as Laura said feel free to to reach out but and thank you for having yeah. us. no. So thanks Laura and Sarah for joining us today. Um, it's been really valuable um, and I think we've covered a number of important points um, and hopefully the audience should have a number of useful takeaways to action in their business or as you said they can come in and uh, contact yourselves or UMI um, for further information and advice. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, if you'd like any more information obviously there's a number of articles and how-to guides um, covering workplace efficiency um, as well as other topics to support you through the current crisis. Um, you can find all those on our website. Um, and if you want to speak to us, you can get in touch over phone, our website and on social. So thanks for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.